My patients are regularly gaslit for symptoms that can't be explained physically. Because we don't have the tools to measure where trauma is stored in your body. At least not until we learn what happens when you block this nerve here in your neck. That's my stellate ganglion and it's where I believe so much of our trauma is stored. You'll learn all about that nerve and why I believe it is the most important advancement in our understanding of trauma and where it gets encoded in our body. And I'll show you how I numb that nerve to help my patients with PTSD, long COVID, and traumatic brain injury. Because all three of those types of trauma are anatomically connected and it's here in that nerve. This bundle of nerves is called the stellate ganglion, and they're called sympathetic nerve fibers because they transmit fight-flight information. When you go into fight-flight mode, those nerves cause your eyelids to shoot up and your pupils to dilate to let more light in as you scan for threats in the environment. They also cause blood to flow from your hands to your pecs and your quads and your big muscle groups so that your body can be primed to fight or flee. If you've ever had cold or sweaty hands when you get anxious, it's because of that nerve there. It can also cause blood to be shunted away from your stomach and your intestines to your fight flight muscle groups, which is why some folks might feel indigestion or stomach pain when they get very anxious. 100 years ago, before we ever had ultrasounds to look inside the body, we began numbing that nerve. And when we numb that nerve, like with lidocaine, it literally turns off your fight flight mode. We originally discovered that blocking that nerve can relieve fight flight related pain syndromes like complex regional pain syndrome or CRPS. Things got a lot more interesting 15 years ago when we discovered that numbing those nerves helps other fight flight related conditions like post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. Numbing that nerve there has been shown to reduce PTSD symptoms significantly and for up to six months in some patients. And I've been doing this for years in patients with PTSD, especially in those with the heavy burden of hypervigilance or hyperarousal or intrusive thoughts. Those are patients who are in 24 seven high alert mode or waiting for the next shoe to drop or maybe having a lot of nightmares at night preventing them from sleeping well. But this is only the start because when COVID came around and folks started developing long COVID symptoms, we doctors were stuck unsure what to do for these really troubling symptoms of brain fog, fatigue, or trouble sleeping, or trouble breathing, or headaches, or that loss of sense of taste and smell. It turns out that the stellate ganglion block also can relieve symptoms in patients with long COVID as well. It can even restore the sense of taste and smell in some patients. We believe the immune system gets hyperactivated in long COVID, which in turn activates the sympathetic nervous system, the fight flight response to keep the body energized as it's trying to fight off this phantom infection. And that hyperactive sympathetic nervous system can further stimulate the immune system to stay hyperinflammatory, causing a vicious cycle. SGB appears to hit the brakes in that vicious hyperinflammatory cycle by arresting the fight flight response. It's like a nervous system and immune system reset. So this shows us that emotional trauma like PTSD and infectious traumas like long COVID appear to get encoded in the stellate ganglion because numbing it can provide significant relief. But it doesn't end there. Many patients I treat have a history of traumatic brain injuries, including concussions that give them all sorts of syndromes like migraines, chronic pain, fatigue, difficulty sleeping, or brain fog. When your brain is endangered after an injury, you better believe that the fight flight response is gonna kick in to help protect it. The problem is that that fight flight survival mode can actually cause more harm than good when it's not balanced properly. It turns out that patients with traumatic brain injury can also have significant symptom relief with the stellate ganglion block. Look at this graph showing how much symptom relief patients can have for one month after the block. 
And what's even more thought-provoking is that that symptom relief in brain fog and headache and other symptoms can go up for even three months in some patients. So let me show you how I do this LA ganglion block. I first start by explaining the procedure and side effects to the patient. Once I've answered all the patient's questions, we then slowly bring the patient into position and then I need to start connecting the monitor so we can monitor the heart rate and blood pressure. And then I open up my sterile equipment here. You can see the gloves first. Then I'm gonna open up the sterile ultrasound gel and then a cover for the ultrasound probe. We put the gel on the ultrasound probe so we can image the neck and all of its structures. Now I'm going to ask the patient to tilt his head back and turn it away from me for the optimal positioning for the block. I'm cleaning the skin here with the antiseptic solution. And now I'm going to put on my sterile gloves. They're kind of a tight fit. I'm gonna now open up the ultrasound gel and put a little bit of the gel on his neck, but not too much. Now I'm going to cover the ultrasound probe with that sterile dressing, and we're gonna start scanning the anatomy. I first want to identify the C6 anterior process. I'm looking at the carotid artery on the left, the internal jugular vein right next to it, some really big vessels. Once I've identified the C6 anterior tubercle, now I'm gonna scan just below it, and this is where I'm going to block the stellate ganglion, right above the longus coli muscle. Because there are so many large vessels and small vessels in the area, I need to use the color Doppler mode to identify these vascular structures so that I don't accidentally puncture them with the nerve block needle. Once I've identified the trajectory of the needle for the block, now I'm going to clean the skin again and thoroughly numb the skin with a 30 gauge needle. That's like a pediatric baby needle, not because the patient's a baby, but because it's a lot more comfortable to numb the skin with a small needle first and then insert the bigger block needle. This way the patient can be awake without sedation and not be too uncomfortable. You can actually observe the needle slowly making its way towards the longus coli muscle where that stellate ganglion lives. And my assistant here is helping slowly inject some saline along the way to spread open the tissue planes. Now it can't be too much volume of saline because that's going to be uncomfortable in an awake patient. So we do small little half CC pushes. And once we've identified the right spot, now we're going to switch to ropivacaine, making sure that we're not near a vessel. You can actually see my assistant pulling back on the syringe to aspirate to make sure we're not in the blood vessel. In addition to using the Doppler on the ultrasound, we can minimize our chances of inadvertently injecting in a vessel. And now we're going to slowly start injecting ropivacaine. If you look closely, you can see the tissue expanding around that white star-shaped structure. That's where the name stellate comes from, from Latin, meaning star, and we call this the halo effect because the ropivacaine is dark on ultrasound, so you can see it spreading around the white stellate ganglion, a black circle around that white structure looks like a halo. We save photographs of the ultrasound images so we can show our patients after we're done so we can answer their questions about the procedure. Once I'm done at the C6 level, I then move up to the C4 level and I begin the same procedure again, okay. cleaning off the skin, numbing the skin with that 30 gauge lidocaine needle, and then beginning to advance the block needle, making sure we're avoiding the blood vessels and other nerves towards the longus coli muscle. This is where the term dual sympathetic reset comes from because we're blocking these nerves at two different levels in the neck, at the cervical six level and the cervical four. At the C4 level, the nerves are shallower and you can really see my needle well here. You can see where it's penetrating through the different muscular layers, avoiding the blood vessels. And now you can slowly see the distortion as the ropivacaine is surrounding the bundle of nerves to circumscribe them with that halo effect again. Once we're done, I remove the needle, I clean off the skin again and remove that goop. Now I wanna start assessing for early signs of that sympathetic nervous system being shut off, like with the droopy eyelid. We can already see the droopy eyelid from the successful SGB. We're gonna put some band-aids on and continue to monitor him to see how the symptoms progress. My left hand uh, feels much warmer than the right hand. 34. 35.9. My eyes are. <laughs> I'm feeling uh, pretty relaxed and calm. I was having a sweet nap here. I didn't get any sedations. It was not painful. I was uh, feeling a little bit pressure on the neck itself, uh, but that was it. It was all good. 
feeling pretty re relaxed. I hope that anyone who has ever been gaslit or struggled with trauma feels empowered with this because it demonstrates that that trauma is physically stored in your body and it might be here in the stellate ganglion itself. And it also shows a path forward because with modern medicine, like with the ultrasound and with numbing local anesthetic medications, we can reset or rewire that stellate ganglion. And that rewiring or neuroplasticity that affects your brain, your heart, and so many other organs that the trauma might be wreaking havoc on can last for months and months. And that time window of symptom relief is a valuable opportunity to engage in self-care and lifestyle interventions that might give you longer and longer periods of relief to learn about my work with the stellate ganglion block, please visit my San Francisco Clinic's website at www.claris-health.com and share what you've learned with loved ones. And like this video if you learned something new and subscribe to keep up with all of my content. Remember that you have more power over your health than you've probably ever been told.